This is a little custom built amp that a guy in Memphis got. Uh, the builder is a, a Memphis guy. Um, and it was a real hodgepodge of parts as it came in. The owner said the amp was just getting too noisy. Well, it would. It had uh, two main issues. Let me find my uh, pointer. Number one, the heater balance resistors in this artificial center tap were, were burnt to hell. And number two, which probably caused number one, uh, the amp had a mismatch of filter caps. It had an F and T, it had an IC, and it had a Vichet. Now Vichet is great. F and T is great. The IC did what all ICs do, and it was leaking. So it was probably that leaking screen uh, node res uh, cap that caused uh, way too much screen current and took out the... Uh, Heater balance resistors. So all the mismatched caps are gone. All three filter caps and the bias uh, bypass cap are now F and T's uh, from the same week or so. And they all have a little bit of silicon holding them to the board, which they didn't have before. And uh, we've got a sprog here on the uh, preamp cathode bypass. Now, in the output tubes, it's a pair of EL84s, kind of similar to an AC15, shut up meter. And uh, the builder had put a 470 microfarad cap there in that bypass, which is way too much for EL84s, a pair of them. So I changed that to 100. And the amp is sounding quite nice. <laughs> It's idling at about uh, 11 watts, a little under 11 watts, which is fine. I prefer it to be a little bit hotter, but this is fine. Now, the builder did an odd thing. He's running two separate input jacks. Each input jack is identical. There's no attenuation. There's no high gain, low gain. There's just two identical jacks, neither of one of which have any grid stopping, which can be a problem in some electrical environments. And each uh, wire from the input jack is going to opposite grids of e these two triodes. But the cathodes and plates of these triodes are run in parallel. And so this doesn't make a lot of sense to me. You've got two identical inputs, and you're not really getting the maximum benefit of having the parallel stages in terms of noise re reduction, you're actually mixing things this way. Um, if I were to do this, um, I would have a high and low gain input jack, a la Fender, Marshall, Vox, pretty much everyone, and have that run to both grid, you know, the output of the, those two jacks run to both grids at the same time, and you get more of the benefits of paralleling two triodes. The rest of it just goes to a fairly standard long tail pair um, phase inverter, though he does have 470k plate resistors, which is a little bit unusual, and a 56k tail, which again seems to be fighting each other. It seems to me that if you wanted to get more gain out of it, 470k plates is kind of extreme, and you, I might have lowered that tail resistor from 56 to something a little bit hotter there. Uh, and I played around with that a little bit. But the amp is stable, and I don't have any issues with anything he did. It doesn't have any negative feedback. It's got uh, four 8 and 16 ohm taps, and each output jack uh, for each tap is individually wired to the secondary of the power uh, output transformer. Uh, tooth washer is there, no issue there. The input jacks aren't great. Um, I don't say that because they're plastic rather than switchgrass, but they're not a very good variety of the plastic jacks. They're, I would have changed these out for some better cliffs or Neutrix, but these these jacks work, and um, I, I just find it interesting, a little bit odd that you have two identical jacks. It doesn't really take advantage of what you could have done there. Um, the amp has got uh, a fair amount of gain. <laughs> sound.
tilt, and I'm not a big fan of some of the artifacts that gives, but... <laughs> hired to make big sweeping changes I was just made hired to make it make sound again and not go ah. <laughs> tone circuits uh, something you don't see in a lot of modern amps but it, it's certainly something I've seen in a bunch of amps from the 50s and early 60s uh, from about noon down it rolls off highs It rolls down lows, rolls off lows. So it's most drastic from about 3.30 to 5 o'clock. And of course there's some overlap in the functions. I find about 10.30, 11 is a nice place to be. It's going to depend on guitars and pickups and your preference. But, you know, as the amp is now, for all the little design quirks, uh, some of which I disagree with, sorry, with which I, some of them I disagree. There's a grammatical sentence in there somewhere. I'm too tired to find it. This has been one of those days. But um, the amp is quiet. The amp is well behaved. The amp is safe. Now, on that note, it has a three position power switch off, standby. Um, on, which is a bit overkill. It's not necessary with the EZ81 rectifier tube or the voltage rating of these filter caps here, but um, it's there. And the issue is due to the way standby is implemented in this app, if you go from on to off and you don't play anything at that point, then the first filter cap stores full voltage and so I almost got zapped when I first got this amp in because it had 340 something volts being stored there at all times. Um, so I added a 330k 1 watt resistor from that B plus node to ground so it will not store DC to zap an owner who's going in there to see if anything is burned or the next tech in line. So let me see at this point 19, 18, 17, 16, it's all, it's dropping pretty rapidly. And that's what I would expect with the 330K resistor. You're not going to have an instantaneous drop. But uh, the way this works is when there is no active circuit, there's, uh, this cap is not being refilled. It just drains off at a constant rate until it gets down to zero. And so that drain down to zero is what happens when the amp is powered off. When you actually play uh, the amp, when you have it powered on, uh, this capacitor is constantly filling and discharging and filling and discharging and charging and discharging and charging and discharging really rapidly. And um, it discharges naturally throughout the cycles that it, that it operates with the DC uh, voltage on it. Um, and so it never stands still long enough for this 330K resistor to drain voltage off of it. Only when the input power to this capacitor is removed and it no longer is cycling of charging and discharging does the uh, uh, drain resistor do anything. So it is a safe thing to add to this um, just to make sure that if an owner ever pokes their finger in, they're less likely to get zapped. Um, it does not affect um, the actual sound or playing of the amp when, when the amp's in use. In this one circumstance, I think it's a, a no-brainer addition. Uh, other circuit designs is not necessary. Um, in some amps, there are already bleeder resistors, um, also called uh, voltage balance resistors, or just the, the bridge resistors in a series uh, capacitor uh, filter cap connection, also known as a totem pole arrangement. Um, I'm kind of babbling at this point, and I just need to stop. Anyway, uh, long story short, too late. The amp no longer buzzes. It no longer hums. It's no longer a fire hazard, and I think the owner is going to be very happy.